Ani, Ani Schnau Gigi. Schön. Er wird es in der Wege. Card, we can go to Japan, up the hill, to be more specific. Anyway, so I'm here to talk about our community energy plan. We rolled out a community energy plan on March of 2017. And uh, we had four goals. Oh, you can go to the next slide. Perfect. Is that good? Just so obtrusive. <laughs> So the uh, Wakomakon Energy Plan identified four priorities, first of which was improving electricity efficiency, second was reducing energy costs, third was educating community members on uh, conservation and uh, using energy efficiently and wisely, and the fourth was identifying which renewable energy products to add to our existing portfolio. Next slide, please. So the community as a whole, we uh, conducted a, and created a community energy baseline which outlined our uh, electricity usage for the community as a whole. So over the two years that uh, we assessed the data from, we uh, collected data in terms of total kilowatt hour used by the community, residential and uh, commercial buildings, uh, band owned buildings, as well as the cost that we paid for the energy. So in 2014, we used approximate, or we paid approximately 3.8 million dollars in energy as a community, the whole residential and band-owned buildings. 25 that increased slightly, or 2015 that increased slightly to approximately 4.1 million. It's interesting to note, though, that the uh, amount of energy decreased over those two years by about uh, 1 million kilowatts hours. So I think that may have to do with some uh, time of use issues there. People maybe use their uh, electricity a little less wise than we're using during peak billing hours, which is uh, during the day, 8 till 4. So if you can, try to use your uh, electricity a little more efficiently after 7. Save all your laundry for that. Um, you know, you can shower minimally every other day. You don't have to shower every day. <laughs> it dries out your skin. <laughs> So that you could save some hot water. Just small things that we could all do to make ourselves a little more energy efficient. So for the band owned buildings, we carried out two complete building audits for two of our highest energy consumers, uh, one of which was the arena. So for the arena, we identified uh, some energy conservation measures, six of them to be uh, precise. So of these six conservation measures, if we implemented all of them, we could uh, realize some savings of approximately $34,000 in one year, which is really good. So these six ECMs, um, I'll just go through them all, uh, one of which would be reducing the air leakage and increasing the wall and roof insulation. Um, this building is about 45 years old, and I think it's in need of uh, some retrofits for the uh, building envelope. We've uh, also kicked off one project, the Ignite project, which has uh, seen an upgrade for our LED lighting, which is great. Uh, that's led by uh, one of our community members who's working on that project right now. So that uh, LED upgrade could realize savings of up to total $4,4300 per year. If you just look at, oh sorry, next one, I'm oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> So on the right, it's just outlining all of the energy conservation measures. So the top bar would show our baseline as it is. And then below our uh, energy conservation measures and the actual savings that we could realize if we implement them all. So the LED lighting has been implemented. So the savings are noted on the far right there, which is great. And then the insulation alone, which is really lacking in this building, insulation and the uh, air tightness and air sealing could realize savings of about $9,000 a year, which is tremendous. Like the arena is one of those buildings that's used by the community as a whole, not only for sporting events, but you know, many people have gotten married here and I think it's in our best interest to make the, uh, have the building running as efficient as possible. Uh, another energy audit was conducted on the nursing home. So these audits, um, an energy baseline was uh, developed and that baseline was used to compare our building to other similar buildings in Canada. So this building is performing about 16%, it's using 16% more energy than similar uh, old age retirement homes in Canada. So we've identified other uh, ECMs for this building as well. So this is a similar type uh, table that we've seen in the previous slide. 
Um, so this building, we had five ECMs, and some of them, you know, you'll see some uh, ventilation reductions as well. Uh, additional uh, insulation, which is like a simple, simple thing we can do. And then you'll notice as well the LED lighting retrofit that we've identified. LED is a, like considered a low hanging fruit. It's something simple you can do. You know, lights are actually literally just hanging there. So if we can go and swap them out for something more efficient. All right. Next slide. Oh, I just wanted to mention the potential savings that we could uh, realize is approximately $7,200 annually with these combined conservation measures. So the next slide, oh, so this slide talks about our residential energy uh, conservation measures that we've uh, taken over the years. Oh, I think we, we just skipped over one, sorry. There it is. So this table outlines our residential energy consumption as a whole. So these uh, examined two years, 2014, 2015. So in 2014, the community as a whole, the residences used over 12 million kilowatt hours and paid over $1.3 million. So these are all our residences. We have uh, over 900 year round residential loads. So I think conservation in the home is of utmost importance. We have, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, maybe single mothers, maybe people on social assistance. We need to be using our energy more efficiently and making our homes more comfortable. So if you're heating your home, you want your heat to stay in there. So there's uh, ways that we could help you conserve. So next slide. So in 2015, there was a conservation program that was rolled out as the Aboriginal Conservation Program. So that was developed through the uh, a partnership with the IESO, the Independent Electricity System Operator. So from May to November of 2015, over 400 homes had energy assessments completed. And of those 400, well, approximately 450 homes, 410 of them had uh, ECMs implemented. And I outlined one of these homes on the right there. So this one resident, um, she impl or they implemented these ECMs. So they installed uh, weatherization on the doors and windows, additional insulation in the attics and crawl spaces, um, energy efficient refrigerator and freezers, as well as a programmable thermostat. So pre-conservation program was the 2013-2014 bar, which is blue. So the last year, 2015, 2016, after all these ECMs were implemented, this homeowner seen savings of uh, a decrease of 34% just based on these simple conservation measures, which is really good, really <coughs> significant. We could take you from like a $100 bill a month to $60 bill a month, or $60 bill a month, which is really good. So this program has been a success. Um, We've already enrolled in that program, so as of now, we won't be, there's no planned uh, future pulling out of the uh, ECMs and the building assessments through, I think it was through the Save On Energy program and the IESO, but we will be doing home energy assessments through the energy planning group and uh, partnership with tech services. They'll be up here later to speak about what they do. Uh, another area that the, uh, that the energy plan identified was uh, looking at uh, different renewable uh, energy projects that we can add to our existing portfolio. Uh, one of which is solar PV. Uh, we're well suited in uh, the community to have uh, a beneficial solar PV project. Uh, we have a lot of south facing roofs, which is ideal for a solar PV installation. Uh, one project that we're planning on rolling out, it's been started. It, has, uh, it will be started in the first quarter of 2018. So it's a solar microgrid project. So we looked at all of our top energy consumers in the community. We identified eight of them for potential solar PV installations, which would help to offset their energy consumption, as well as different uh, energy conservation measures. The arena is one of them. Like they're our top energy, uh, energy consumers in the community. So this 300 kilowatts, I don't want to go into it too much because I have uh, the uh, company leading that project doing a presentation, so I just wanted to briefly talk about it. So this, uh, like I mentioned, it's going to be on eight different sites within the community, and it's, it's going to save the community a lot of money for our abandoned buildings. Next slide, please. Uh, this is something that Nikki had touched on. Uh, this is uh, the, another potential renewable energy resource, and it's biomass. 
So if this is something that could have an effect on homeowners. We're looking at rolling out a wood stove exchange program to help create uh, an economy within the community for our future planned wood pellet production facility. So biomass is like one of the most efficient ways to heat your home, second only to natural gas, but natural gas isn't really an option here. So this is a really good opportunity for homeowners to uh, heat their heat their home with something that's not harmful to the, harmful to the environment like uh, fossil fuel burning appliances. A lot of people have fuel oil burning furnaces. So you're the individuals that we want to talk to. Any homeowners out there that have a uh, fossil fuel burning appliance, please come and speak with me. and. Uh, we would like to see or gauge your interest in getting a, a biomass type uh, furnace installed in your home. And it will be good, like, because we could create our own economy rather than sending energy uh, money out to uh, Manitoulin and Fuels or whoever we use, we could uh, be paying ourselves essentially. Question? I, um, I rent from Rental Property Management mm -hmm. and it's electric key. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, conversations with them to? Um, uh, move towards a more, um, well, with, yeah, that's a good question. But with electric heat, a lot of times it's a radiant based board heater. Um, <coughs> we could do that. It depends on the a lot of the size of your facility because you're going to go from having these base board heaters to having a radiant stove there, like much like a wood stove that provides radiant heat. Mm -hmm. With the uh, with the fossil fuel burning furnaces, the infrastructure is already there oh, okay. to have it ventilated throughout the house and moved throughout the house. So. Yes and no, I suppose. Because, you know, we'd like to get as much of these out as possible. But uh, I think for now we're going to start at uh, re reducing our greenhouse gas footprint. And that's an excellent way to take out these fossil fuel burning appliances. All right, next question. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Quick yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, this is cheaper. You're going to pay a lot less to heat your home with wood pellets than you would compared to electricity. So it would be less money out of their pocket. Um, right now, the domestic need for these wood pellets isn't really there. The domestic market is still growing. A lot of it are exported. So we gotta like you know take our time in assessing the size of this roller. We don't want to be in a situation where we can't provide enough wood pellets. So we really have to take some baby steps into it. Um, there's a lot of people on Manitoulin right now that have wood burning, uh, or sorry, wood pellet furnaces, and you know they swear by them. So you don't have like a huge area with all your wood. You know it is a good workout, but uh, you have a smaller area. So this would really help the elderly if they have to if they just went in with like a little scooper, put it into their hopper, as opposed to them relying on maybe grandkids or kids to come over. Answer your question, please. All right. So my last slide here touches on another potential uh, potential renewable energy resource, and this is a district heating solution for our planned light <coughs> industrial park. So this district heating solution would utilize ground source heat pumps <coughs> to uh, heat and cool our buildings, as well as uh, biofuel furnaces and boilers that would also heat, that would also provide electricity. And a third renewable resource that we would utilize here would be uh, solar PV installations. So I think, uh, I'm really excited about this project. Um, looking forward to seeing this go off because I think it would really put us in line and uh, give us a name as like energy leaders in the country, in leading the way for First Nations to be more uh, conservation minded and looking at green energies. Because historically our people, you know, we weren't wasteful, we used everything, every part of the animal. The fish, we used every part of it. So I think, you know, if we're utilizing our energy a lot better, I think it should be an easy transition because basically we grew up being conservation minded. So in closing, um, key points, you know, try to shower, limited amount of showers, you know. Maybe try taking a shower with the lights off. Save some further energy there. It's great. Shower together. Shower for two. I know. That's a possibility. 
Anyway, that's all the time I have.